In this video, I want to prove that if we have two data points, x1 and x2, and x1 and x2 are independent, then it turns out Bayes' rule says that the posterior density, the probability of theta, given x1 and x2, is independent of the order in which we receive x1 and x2. So this is actually the same as the probability of theta, given x2 and then x1. And the way in which we're going to go about proving this is by starting off with the probabilities of theta given x1 and x2. And we're going to apply Bayes' rule on this between theta and x1. And we're just going to keep x2 thick. So x2 is actually not going to do anything here. We're just going to use Bayes' rule, which we know from before. This is just equal to the probability of x1 given theta. And still, we're going to have x2 here. And it's that times our prior, so it's the probability of theta given x2, and it's this whole thing divided through here by the integral from the probability of x1 given choice of theta and given x2 times the probability of theta given x2 integrated over all potential values of theta. So I'm just integrating the numerator in the denominator. Then what we notice, if x1 and x2 are independent, then we can rewrite the probability of x1 given theta and given x2. Well, x2 doesn't convey any information about x1, so the conditioning on x2 disappears. So this is just equal to the probability of x1 given choice of theta. So that's going to simplify things a bit, because I can just get rid of the x2 dependence in both the top and the bottom in terms of the likelihood. I can't get rid of it in terms of the prior, but I can get rid of it in terms of the likelihood. Okay, so then what we do is we apply Bayes' rule again, but now we apply Bayes' rule to this term in the numerator and this term in the denominator. So now we're applying Bayes' rule between theta and x2. If we do that, we get that this is equal to the probability of x1 given theta times, now what we're gonna have is the probability of x2 given theta times, now we're going to have the probability of theta, and then what we need to do is we need to divide through by the probability of the data, which I'm just going to use as a shorthand, the probability of x2. So that's numerator, and note that this sort of whole second half of the expression here has come from applying Bayes' rule to this particular term here. Then if I just apply it to the denominator, that's going to give me something very similar, except I'm just going to have an integral sign around it, so it's going to give me the probability of x1 given choice of theta times the probability of x2 given choice of theta times the probability of theta now divided through by the probability of x2 and I'm going to have to integrate over all potential values of theta. And because we note that this probability of x2 has no theta dependence, it cancels from both the top and the bottom. And we note that now what we've done is we've decomposed our posterior density, this thing here which we were trying to work out, into something which depends only on x1 and theta times something which only depends on x2 and theta times a prior which solely depends on theta. And that's the same in both the top and the bottom. And because it's multiplicative, that tells us that the order doesn't matter, and hence this is equal to the probability of theta given x2 and given x1. Hence, by applying Bayes' rule twice, in other words, using sequential Bayes, we have shown that if our data come from a process whereby, in this case, x1 and x2 are independent of one another, then it doesn't matter in terms of the posterior, and hence for inference, the order in which we receive those two data.